Hey everyone, Mike here. I've got another update on the Starlink private beta, this one even bigger than the last. Coming up. So I just posted an update on the Starlink private beta yesterday. If you haven't seen it yet, go check that one out first. But there's been so much new information coming out today that I had to post this video right away. I couldn't wait. It's even bigger than the last. A lot more details about what the private beta is going to look like. There's so much, I'm just going to dive right in and start showing you what we've got. Here we go. Okay, first up from an FCC filing, we now have some data on what they're calling the Starlink router. So this seems to be a small triangle shaped device. And from what we can tell from the filing, this is the Wi-Fi router that would go inside your house. It would be powered and connected to the Starlink user terminal or Starlink dish as they seem to be calling it up on the roof. So this is the inside the house component that does Wi-Fi to your devices. And then the Starlink user terminal or dish up on the roof, uh, actually talking to the satellites. So here's a photo of the back you can see with the label or the bottom, I should say. We've also got a, a detailed look or diagram of what exactly is going to be on the label. You can see the name there, Starlink Rotor. It also appears to be powered by power over ethernet, uh, just like uh, we think the dish will be as well. And then this just shows a diagram. This is the test setup they used at the FCC, but uh, I put that there just to show that it's going to have at least two ethernet ports, the WAN uh, carrying the power, and of course the signal from the Starlink dish, and then the LAN, I guess, available for internal wired devices. So these images, these were captured by Bubby4j from Reddit. And what it looks like is they looked at the actual content from the public Starlink website and looked inside the JavaScript content itself. And they found some key strings in here that I'm going to take you through. The first here, this is actually seems to be part of the support, uh, like customer support interface. But I put this here because it shows a list of the various hardware components and software components that are going to be involved in the system. So what you can see on the, the first three are the Starlink dish. That's the user terminal we've looked at before that would go with a view of the sky. Then there's the Starlink power supply. And from what we can tell, this is a power over ethernet supply that's going to supply both the dish on the ceiling and our third device that we just looked at, the Starlink rotor. And then at the bottom, you can see the software components of the same things, the dish, the rotor, and then they also mention consumer apps. So we might be seeing a Starlink app uh, that you'd be able to run to presumably manage your service somehow. As part of that same pulling out of data from the public website, We've got this gorgeous photo of the user terminal actually installed on a roof. And this is the another key thing we're looking at from the code. This is actually the component of the site. It seems that when you now sign up for information, it's going to be able to tell you immediately if you're eligible to use the service uh, kind of right now. And the key thing here is that it actually has the latitude numbers for the range of service. And you can see here near the top, they're saying the minimum is 44.9 degrees to 51.8 degrees. So a fairly narrow swath, but it seems like the way it's set up is that if you fall within that range, then you'll be able to proceed to the sign up. I'm guessing this is once they reach the public beta phase. And if you're outside the range, they're inviting you to register to express your interest, but you're still kind of in the waiting list until they expand coverage. So that's a pretty key number there, that range, 44.9 to 51.8 degrees. Next up, we've got a bit of text again from the JavaScript of the public website, and it's explaining the fee that they're charging. And it looks like during the private beta, 
they're going to be charging you one dollar a month that's a great price um, and really it's not even to pay for the service it's just a, a, a fee that they're charging just to test the billing system so if you get in the beta you can expect to be paying one dollar a month just a nominal fee to to test the system and effectively you're getting the hardware and the service for free and this one's a, a, a bit of text like a welcome section you can see welcome to the Starlink beta and they're specifically calling out the friends and family beta testing program so I'm guessing this refers to what we've been calling the private beta and then it's really just confirming that you're going to need to be able to place the the dish the user terminal with a clear view of the northern sky and also confirming that you're going to be able to either mount it on the roof or on the ground. And this last bit of text, the Starlink Beta Services Terms. So essentially the terms of service for the private beta. The key thing I want to flag here is this middle section, confidentiality and no social media. It's effectively confirming you're not going to be able to discuss the beta program with anyone outside of your household, except for SpaceX employees and confirming that you're definitely not going to be able to share anything on the internet uh, about the beta. So this includes the fact that you're in the beta and anything about the beta itself. So if I do join the beta, sorry everyone, I'm not gonna be able to share any information, um, unfortunately, but um, we'll just have to go by what SpaceX tells us. So this next set of images was generated by a Reddit user Vez Bros. And what he's done is he's taken the, the public website from Starlink and he's run it locally and simulated, in a sense, the backend API. And that's allowed him to actually render the pages just like you would see them if you were a, a subscribed user. So he's not part of the beta, he stated, but he's generated these images. And I'm just flicking through them just to give you an idea of what the experience is going to look like when it does go live for, for you if you're a beta user or potentially for the public beta. Okay, and this last set of images I'm going through, this is information from that public website again, and what they've, they've got an FAQ basically. So what I've done is I've taken the questions and answers and pulled those out so we can look at them. I'm gonna go through them relatively quick but you can pause and read the full text. This text is as it was on the website, so I haven't corrected any grammar. There's a, seems like a couple small mistakes. So who can participate in the Starlink beta? As we've been discussing, this is the northern United States and lower Canada. And now they're further confirming that it seems like they're starting with Washington State. So it looks like those of you in Washington State, you're going to be able to get first go at the private beta and then expanding to lower Canada and northern United States. This one here, a clear view of the northern sky. Uh, they're again showing some latitude numbers. These ones are slightly different saying between 44 and 52 degrees north latitude. Definitely the same range but uh, slightly different. And then this one again just confirming what we saw in the terms of service you're not going to be able to share uh, with social media or the internet anything about the beta program and you're going to have to sign an NDA before you can join. This one looking at the service quality, effectively saying it's going to be high quality service but they might still be having intermittent gaps. So there might still be spots where you don't have a satellite overhead to provide service but it looks like when you do they're expecting the service to be high quality. This question here, uh, what's expected of participants? Uh, I flagged this one up because it specifically mentions an eight week period. So I don't know if that means the beta will only last eight weeks or just that they want the commitment for eight weeks that you'll be able to provide feedback and, uh, and input. This one again, confirming the $1 nominal cost just to test the billing system. This one, just some details. They're going to be sending you the kit via FedEx and they're going to include the mounting hardware to mount either to the roof or to the ground. This is a lot more detail on how Starlink's going to work. 
This is really nothing new that we haven't covered in our discussions before. Go take a look at those other videos. Uh, subscribe if you want to get all the latest videos. And then the last one here, just confirming that even though you do have to sign an NDA to start, you'll be able to cancel at any time. So a lot of new information there, a lot to unpack. The thing on top of my mind is the NDA, the confidentiality. If I'm part of the private beta, or if you out there, if you're part of the private beta, we're not going to be able to share images or experiences or information on the beta itself. I'm definitely going to be keeping all of you updated on all the latest that can be shared. Subscribe down below if you haven't yet. This is huge. The beta feels really close now. For all of you in Washington State, this could be coming your way anytime, so definitely sign up on that website if you haven't. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.